Hello, everybody. My name is Alexandra with This Is Improv, and we are here with another episode of Talk About a Tuesday, where we talk about all things the arts and the people who love them. Today, I have the glorious, very talented, the amazing Kim with me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, so we've known Kim for a couple of years now, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Kim? Well, I am Kim Weissmantle. I am the education director at the old Davy School Historical Museum. And I just realized I've been there in August will be nine years, which is crazy to me. Um, and I'm a Davy native. I grew up here and uh, went to FSU. I actually, so I got into the history kind of like backwards. Uh -huh. And I think it kind of ties more into like the entertainment, like the arts more too, because uh, um I did theater in high school and mm -hmm. loved it and um, thought I was going to do theater in college and tried out, went to like the first tryouts auditions in, at FSU mm -hmm. and like um, black screened. Like I didn't know what to do. Once I got there, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't think I want to do this. So I was like, okay, maybe, maybe this is not exactly what I'm looking for. So I uh, um, kind of took a weird path through uh -huh. all the different what I what I thought I wanted to do after that I wanted to be a veterinarian for a hot minute worked at a vet's office don't like blood turns out um and then I don't even know I ended up with a recreation and leisure services degree uh -huh. so I'd like to say I majored in Leslie Nope and <laughs> which was so fun and uh so I did that and through that was I wanted to do children's programming like summer camp I've grown up going to summer camp my whole life and uh, did an internship at a wonderful museum up there. And turns out I really like the educational programming. So I went back and got my master's in public history, which is bringing history to the public mm -hmm. and through like museums, through um, public art, through uh, like statues and things like that. And um, that's where I really found my passion. I was like, that's it, bing bong right there. <laughs> The ping pong. <laughs> so I actually uh, through that started working at the Davy School when we moved down here, um, and I've been there since. So I very much love it. That's awesome. Um, yeah, took a, like a little weird path through the through the park to get here. It was <laughs> <laughs> took a left and then a right, and then I was like, you know exactly. what? Let me make a U turn and then do like that that way over there. Yeah. Oh, that seems fun. <laughs> yeah, and I like to say it's just as you know, people when you say you like major in theater you get the same faces when you major in recreation yeah. so people are like what do you, what is that what do you do then and I'm like, well, yeah there's a lot you do with it <laughs> so and uh, I'm very thankful for it so it's very useful that's yeah. awesome so <laughs> what made you what made you want to start with theater go cool. like I said I went to summer camp but I would go to my grandparents house every summer mm -hmm. and my grandpa would get tickets to their small local playhouse like the the, the, the shows there yeah. and uh, um he'd always make sure because I was also a band nerd too. I love band, I like musical stuff. I, uh, um, he always wanted to make sure I was like right up front next to the box so I could see them playing the music during the, during the show. And so we went to like plays like four or five every summer. Everyone they put on, I was there. And if he could get multiple tickets, we would go. And uh, so I just loved that. So from there, wherever I could kind of get into, into theater, kept doing it. And then when I got to high school, musical theater um, was so much fun. That was, I did that all four years. And it was a great time. So that's awesome. Yeah. My, that's so cool. My one claim to fame is I, I got the lead in the show in my 11th grade. I was, we did a play called our musical called uh, um, Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect Up? And <laughs> I got to play, her name is Becky, but they called her the little fat girl. Uh -huh. So I got to wear a fat suit and sing a song called um, God Loves Little Fat Girls Too. <laughs> so that's so great. <laughs> That's such a specific title for a musical. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was a, such a good experience because uh, um, the, my, the teacher, Mr. Bonnet, who's wonderful and incredible. Um, Bonnet, like Daniel Bonnet? Daniel Bonnet, yes, the famous Daniel Bonnet. He taught me directing in college. Oh, oh he's the best. Then that's why you're so wonderful because you had a good, <laughs> good instructor. So yeah, so he, he came, I think, I don't know if I was in 10th or 11th grade when he came started at Western but uh um when he started 
there's like no budget for for high school musicals you know so we made it he made it work he picked it because it had such a such a um we didn't have much of a set and it really Mm. came down to like our costumes and just in us like we were the show like there was no big set changes I remember we used just like block like square blocks as as desks and things like that and so it really just it was such a good experience because we made so much with with the little tiny bit that we were that we were given and uh it was so much fun so he did a great job and yeah he's really good at that yeah yeah that's awesome yeah so I would say that your acting skills also come in handy now too, because yeah. I see you with the, cause I've never seen you do, like I've seen you do the tours for the adults and stuff like that, yeah. but I haven't seen you do with the kids and everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, with kids, we know they say anything that's on their mind oh, and yeah. you have very good, quick reactions and you handle yourself so well. well so you. how do you think <laughs> like your theater experience plays into your life now? Well, and that's, it's, it's public speaking. It's just being comfortable with who your audience is. Mm-hmm. And so, so when you're speaking with a, you know, with an older group, you, you talk to them, I hate to say like, like you talk to them differently than you would a group of kids. Like right. yeah. what keeps them engaged is different right. than what, uh, what just depending on that age group. Um, and so it's just, it's, I always say, you just got to read the room. Like what, what mm-hmm. is this group looking for? How can I speak best to this group? And even like when we're doing the school tours, not every, not, not every group is going to be enthralled with your script of what you're saying. Right. So you kind of almost have to, um, what is it that they're interested in it and kind of gear it into that, like kind of steer towards them to bring them back to the bigger picture. Yeah. And, uh, um, I, I, that's what I love. That's what I love with the kids. Cause every group is completely different. Everyone throws you curveballs too. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's funny because we okay so um in the exhibit in the uh, uh everglades exhibit i remember we had a conversation in your office that you said you know people are going to ask if the animals are real sometimes and i hadn't gotten it for like two three days and then like one day it was just every single class asked they're like are those real are those real and i was like oh no we jinxed ourselves because i asked <laughs> exactly well, and so I like, I, I, and also everything is a learning opportunity. Right. Like every silly question can be turned into a, like a chance for them to learn something, even if it's mm-hmm. not specific to that. So it's whenever they ask, is it, is it a real animal? And we're like, no, well, well it is. Yes, it is a real animal. Um, but now they're here for us to learn from. Right. Like, instead of just saying yes, no, end of that conversation. It's like, well, now this is how we use them. We use mm-hmm. them to learn from. And that's, that's as close. And then I'd say, I don't, it's called taxidermy and I don't know anything else about that. So yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's something you guys can research on your own. <laughs> so that's something. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I'll look to the teachers and be like, I'm going to say it. And they're like, oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and even they yeah. still don't believe you. You also are involved with like all of the events that go on at the um, Old Navy School Historical Museum. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who remember, and Jelka and I do the um, comedy ghost tours that go through there. So if you go to those, you can see Kim yeah. um, uh, and we can go inside the schoolhouse and the two homes that are there. It's a blast and Kim is so amazing. So uh, it's it's just cool to see how how you operate during events as well. So, because that's a whole other, yes, you know, yeah. brain that you have to go through. So mm-hmm. how would you, how would you say it is also being in charge event wise over there? We, well, and we try to bring something for everybody. So <laughs> our next event that we have coming up is love letter day. So it's like our Valentine's day event where mm-hmm. you get to come to the school and it's, it kind of more focuses on you make, make a Valentine's and you get to write with the dip pen. So that really brings people in oh. for that, that kind of activity. And then they get to see the rest of the museum and, and everything else that we, we do, but kind of enticing them with these little something different yeah. and something that's fun. Who gets to do that? Who gets to write a true love letter with a dip pen, you know, and um, other stuff we have coming up. We have the Orange Blossom Festival, which that's, that is with the town. And that's been going on since 1941, almost every year since 1941. Mm-hmm. So we still try to be involved in that as much as we can too. Um, and then we do um, classes like painting classes, making soap. And so just trying to have some little something for everybody that goes mm-hmm. on. So it's a lot of fun to try and to come up with something new and fresh and, 
and exciting yeah. for people. And we're a hundred years old, but you know, we're, we're still there. We're hip and with it. So you're, hip. <laughs> you're I'm super hip. I'm gonna stand by it. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, you yeah. stand by it. I exactly. say that all the time too to my students. I'm like, I'm hip. Yeah. I'm, I got it. Exactly. I I know, I I'm know with the, the youth. The TikTokers, you got, you know, what the, with the buttons and the yeah media things so. yeah my students tried yeah. to teach me how to TikTok the other day and i was mm. like i mean i know how to do it i just won't do the dances you mm. won't get me to do the dances oh no, that's that's no, no tell me about where the love of history comes from i've always loved history like my favorite like when i was younger would always read like the historical fiction books and i would say like the um what was the first american girls you know like when i was re- re- really young i love those oh yeah then they have like the Dear America series, which I recommend to everybody, which are like diaries that you would read through of like, there was a girl who went on the Titanic, a girl went across the Oregon Trail, um, like for one for every historical yeah. thing. So I just love that. And uh, um, I, it, I I found a diary entry a long time ago where it said I wanted to be, there was, I was like, I either want to be an oceanographer, an actress, a veterinarian, or a historian. So I don't know what kind of 11 year old I is, I was, but that gives you an idea. And, uh, but That's so awesome. I, I want to be a story because I want to be the people who like on the, when they have like the doc, documentaries who come up mm-hmm. and they're like the person who tells you the story. Right. I, love that. I wanted to do that part. That was, <laughs> and then um, my grandpa is big into history. He was a history major himself back in the day before he became an FBI agent. That's a whole nother set of stories for you there. But he, uh, um, when I would visit, he would always be doing our family genealogy. Uh-huh. And so we would literally drive around the Carolinas and find my decades back family, like great, 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 wow. great families, like their cemetery plots. Mm-hmm. And I remember once we went through a cemetery and he knew that there was another, another sibling in this family, but it was, he was born between, it was like a young boy who died, but he was born between census records. So he didn't come up in the census mm-hmm. and going through these old cemeteries we found him, like we found the cemetery, the, the plot in the graveyard and we were able to add him into the tree. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like that's how you bring people back to life. Like that's, yeah, you, that's all you want. Like, and I love the Hamilton's, the, uh, um, who tells your story. Like that's oh, yeah. all you are at the end is, is what kind of story are you going to be and who's going to tell it? So that's what, that's what I love is, is bringing just, who are we going to be in a hundred years? right that's let's make a good story for it but yeah I love it I love history that's so cool like being a detective too that's true (laughs) it's so true oh my gosh I love it so that's I can spend days going through the old newspapers Mm -hmm. and old like the census forget about it there's a new (laughs) census record coming out this year I think it's coming out in April I'm very excited about it so you only get them like every two so it's very exciting. <laughs> These are the things that oh, that's really, awesome. But, yeah. So it's a lot of fun and I, it's something new every day. It's old, but it's something new. every day. Right. But, new for new for us. Exactly. To learn about. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's amazing. I mean, when we, when we first spoke to you, it was mainly concerning, um, the podcasts, our Legends of Yesterday podcast, and just to get a couple stories. Um, but then we started, we just kept talking. <laughs> um, and you, you're just such a good storyteller too. You know, oh, yeah. these are, these are things that people don't remember or that can trigger a memory of something. Um, and it, it's just so fun to, to listen to you speak about the history of the town or history of anything you you recollect because it's um it's always so fun to to watch and listen to you because Aww. you're just you're really good at, at recalling everything and making you feel like you're you're watching it for the first time or hearing it for the first time you know so good. it's really that's cool really well and that's like I so I grew up in Davie and mm-hmm. in high school you couldn't have paid me to stay in Davie like I was like <laughs> I'm out goodbye but you know, you get a, you get a little older. We wanted to move back to my husband and I were moving back down south, and we wanted to be near family. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe we'll live in Miami. We're not gonna live in Davie. And then I, once I started working at the old Davie school, I found out that there's like history here. I wish I would have known that 
growing up. And I would have had, I would have had so much more of a tie to the community because that's, I, when you grow up, you think history is just Boston and New York and then mm. that's it. And it's not, it's walk, it's everywhere around you right now. The only reason that we're here is because of what they did here a hundred years ago. Yeah. And that's, so that's why I was like, that's my goal. So that all the other kids growing up here know what makes this place special because it deserves it. it it's, it's fascinating to me. So yeah, I'll tell you stories all day. I tell people if I talk too much, just tell me to stop because I'll keep going. No, so. <laughs> no you can never talk yeah. too much to us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Wonderful. laughs> yeah. So this is Talk About It Tuesday. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask you some questions about tacos. Describe to me your favorite taco build but as a as though you are also teaching me about tacos okay okay so you can either have a hard shell or a soft shell taco but I'm going to argue here that the hard shell taco is the way to go today so if you want, you can have your soft shell, but I'm, we're going to talk about the hard shell taco today. And you can put anything inside of that. You could do anything with that taco. Tacos can be anything, but we're going to talk about the fish taco. I love a fish taco. You put some of the taco, you got that like cilantro lime sauce on there, a little bit of lettuce and a little bit, of, that's all you need. And so you could put anything else you would like it, but myself, that is the taco that I like. I don't know if that was teaching you much about tacos, but that was well, no, that was great. So there you go. So, that was great. So, that was that very so. lecture of like, I know we like this, but we're gonna discuss. There's this. nothing <laughs> wrong with a soft shell taco. Some days are soft shell taco days. Today is a hard shell taco day. Is a hard hard shell <laughs> fish taco. And you could get grilled or fried, whatever. There's lots of choices with tacos. So that's that was I'm awesome. Doing. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> that works so anyways this is great (laughs) um okay so if I didn't know you what's something I can't tell just by looking at you something about yourself um uh another part of performing I like to I play guitar and so I love myself an open mic guitar night so that's uh yeah I, I like to do that. I haven't, I don't play as much as I used to, but um, that's, that's my favorite thing to do. So <laughs> I, oh, in, no. my, in high school, my, I, the first time I ever played like in, like in front of everyone, it was at, mm-hmm. um, it was a bar called Chocolate Moose. I don't know why they let us in. Cause we were only like 16, 17, but they let us in. Mm-hmm. And that's where the, it's a new, it's a bar on 84. It's Mac house now, but uh, oh. yeah, which, which is wonderful. I love that place too, but it still holds like the nostalgia when I go there. I'm like, oh, this is the first time I played for anybody. So that is yeah. so cool. So I, I do like to play guitar and I love a karaoke. So I'm like a reluctant extrovert sometimes because I like to like, I do like to perform, but then I also like to absolutely not right, be in course. front of everybody. That's what I still go that like blank screen when sometimes when I'm in front of people. I'm like, hmm. Now that you told me that you play guitar, if in a joke and I ever need a guitar. <laughs> You get a it. call. Camp I'm not like I, I always say like I'm a campfire player. Like I can I love it. Rock out at a campfire. But uh um, you only need four chords for a musical. You basically, know? that's all you I got those down. We can do those. So yeah, it's that's uh, awesome. That's my favorite. Thing, so. <laughs> uh, my, like, oh, I have a four, I have Lincoln, who's my four-year-old, who yeah. uh, um he likes to when I put it on my lap like this, he likes to sit under it. And then he likes to hit the strings while I do the chords. <laughs> Eventually he'll get the both hands part, but it's right. really my favorite thing. So, yeah. That is so cute. He's a little, I got to get him a little tiny guitar. I got him a ukulele, but it's not quite the same. So not I don't good. know how to play ukulele. <laughs> so just the guitar. So That is yeah. so cool. And um, I want to ask you, so you play D&D, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for those of you that don't know, we talk about it a lot. It's also involved in a lot of her comedy sketches. Uh, but Angelica and I teach Dungeons and Dragons as a part of our curriculum for students because it teaches you character building, world building, communication, and teamwork. So how did you encounter the world of Dungeons and Dragons? I don't like, so my husband just asked one day, he's like, would you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? I was like, well, 
you know, I've like, I've seen it on TV and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd give it a shot. Like, whatever. We'll just play once. We played once and I was hooked. Like, I'm good to go. We do not play enough. Um, we, uh, our, our friends who get together, even before the pandemic, it was so hard to get everybody together. Yeah. And one, we even, he would, I don't know if we Zoom, but he would always be calling in. He lives in Costa Rica. So like, we're trying to get everybody from everywhere together to play. And it was so hard. So now even with the pandemic, we tried to do it virtual online, uh-huh. but it's just so fun just that you can make whatever decision you want and you roll the dice and see what happens. And he, uh, um, when we first were going to play, that's when he started, showed me critical role, oh, which yeah. is ho- hopefully everybody knows what that is now. Cause it's, uh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> and so that really, that spurred like just the storytelling side of it is what just fascinates me so that's I I we like I said we do not play enough but I love it and love making new characters just for fun seats to see yeah what you can come up with so that's what my first one I started was like a half elf bard which I'm like okay that's kind of boring now (laughs) like but she's pretty badass so I'll I'll take it (laughs) that's awesome so (laughs) yeah before when I first learned it was just like oh you'll really like this because you do improv and I was like oh okay and when we got together and Jelga had been playing for like a whole year before I started and they, her, the group needed another person. So I was like, oh, cool. Dra- I could be a half dragon. Sick. Oh, so, <laughs> so I was a silver dragonborn ranger beast master. Oh my gosh. And I was like, what? I get an animal. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's just like the spiral continued and I was like am I supposed to be super serious or he said improv am I supposed to joke around like what's going on and that's your group it's like what is the dynamic there? right and we found the balance there were some moments that just like blew your mind Mm -hmm. and it's fun to hear if you play the same story as another person but they play in a completely different group to hear how they handled the situation yeah Yeah. (laughs) so um the very first time we played we of course we walk into a tavern and they're like oh because I, I was the bard like why don't you play roll for performance so I'm like all excited okay here's my first roll my first game of d d roll the dice and I got a one I got a one which started like a bar brawl that <laughs> that like we lost a lot of like HP like we were it was it was excessive for the first like it was so I, I've since then have tried to recoup re- poop from my one but I, I never roll high on my performances so she's not she's a good you fighter, never roll high like, when it matters no you know? do you think D has kind of like influenced your life at all since you started playing well it's like well um I love like with so back to critical role because blah 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 they're my favorite I just love that it started as a group of friends who just came together and made something yeah and so that's why I really was like well what am I I want to I want to make something. So I started, I like, I started writing more. And then with that is why I, I wanted to write the book or put together the book for the school right. that I did. So really it, it's, I always say, it's like funny, like people who play D and D influenced like a historical uh, a book. What? <laughs> um, what is book. that? Uh, no, oh my gosh. Look at this. It is. So Whoa. Put, I put this together because I just had a lot of, um, we had a lot of time during COVID where there wasn't much else to do. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was just like, I wanted to make the thing, like do the thing you love. And I love history. I love writing. So here we go. And now it's available for everybody to enjoy. And uh, um, so it's 196 pictures of the town and going through it just, um, it was like, it was like world building. Yeah, like you need to have you know, when you're building your world in D D and D, you have to like have your the the foundations. Then you build up like the government and the everything that you need. And so it was so funny because I'm like, okay, but this is this is real life world building. I just have to piece it together from the facts yeah. that I have. So that definitely I think was an influence to why I did. It, yeah, I do it. So that's but, amazing. Don't Wait, tell my parents; they won't understand that. But of course, I just, I just tell them, like, <laughs> so that works. So. So where can people, so yes, so Kim, Kim put this book together uh, and it is just so cool to see something of our town just like all together, one place. 
And where can people find this book? At the, it is available at the Old Davy School ever at a reduced price from the retail price, but it's also available at Barnes and Noble. Um, it should be available at like Walgreens and places like that. It, it's it's around in the local stores. Awesome. Um, it's called Images of America Davy. There's a series of these, and that's uh, another thing was I had when I actually was at Walgreens and saw the kiosk of all these. And there's like Plantation, Coral Springs, Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale, everywhere around us except Davy. So I got like, why don't we have one? And so I went on their website to be like, how do I find out how we do this? Blah, blah, blah. And there's one link that said, uh, be an author. And I'm like, okay. So boom. So, okay. <laughs> so I just submit a whole thing to do it. But it was just funny because we were not there. And now we will be whenever they finally add it to the stores. So, but the Davy School is the number one place to buy it at the reduced price. So, yes. Yeah. That is so cool. No, that that's like just so amazing that you put it, that so. together. And then it's because it was a lot of like brain power. I use it as a reference now too, because I forget things. I'm like, what did I, I know I look researched that. Oh, there yeah. it's, it's been <laughs> together. I'm like, okay. So it's very helpful for me too, but yeah, no, it's a nice little encyclopedia for us to just exactly a good go basis. back to. So yeah. And now, now I've thought of a thousand other things I would have wanted if I had an extra hundred pages, I would have put in, but that's, that's so for the cool next though. So. I know there's just so much you don't think about it, but there's just so much that has happened around town. And when Angelica and I first started researching, that it was just like it blew our minds how Absolutely. first of all, how funny some of the things in town were that came to be. And then just the stories that people have of around town. And we're a part of the the people who grew up in Davy Facebook group. Yes. And yeah listening to some of the stories they're like oh yeah some people have written back to us like yeah this happened oh. and this happened oh yeah, yeah of course you can use a story it's like oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's also, and like this this doesn't even go up this only goes up to like the 80s like I, I couldn't wow. really go much farther than that um for it to be the in there um with the project but there's 80s on is, an, is a whole different story so that's it's a completely different dynamic in Davy, so that's gonna that'll be interesting to really yeah. start piecing into too to tell that whole story because right it's Davy's a it's a strange place strange it's and wonderful strange, place. it's a it is a wonderful place and you yeah. also have a podcast dedicated to the town so yes. why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit about that so it's called old school if you just look up old Davy school on all the podcast platforms it comes up um I've had a little bit of hiatus while doing the book but now we're going to get back into it this year. Um, so we'll have some new episodes coming up soon. Um, just each little short subjects about the town. And I try and incorporate things from the archive that we have at the school, which um, is just an incredible resource. So we have a bunch of um, oral histories from people who, who, who were here in 1918. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, when they've grown up and we have all of their interviews about what, what life was like. So I try and incorporate some clips from that. Um, we have some old videos of, of people in town telling their stories, so incorporating that. So try and show you what, what it is that we have. So it's, uh, it's very fun. So hopefully we'll get that back out there soon. So, yeah. Yeah. If you guys have ever listened to the legends of yesterday podcast that we have, then you know that Kim has been on there multiple times. <laughs> uh, we even did the Halloween episode. We did a collaboration together to share our spooky stories from uh, the history and then personal stories that we have had as well. So please make sure to go check that out. Everything involving Kim that has been mentioned here will be linked in the description down below. So Yay. please, please, please check it out. Uh, Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. This is just so much fun. So this is, this is awesome. Uh, yeah, we've been, we've been trying to get Kim here for a while. Stop <laughs> it. I'm here now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, you beautiful creatures and glorious alicorns. Yes, because we're taking our podcast uh, usage into here. Um, if you're new here, you're a beautiful creature. If you are returning, you're a glorious alicorn. Um, if you would like to take any improv classes, please make sure to go to www.thisisimprov.com. Sign up today. We teach kids, teens, and adults 
adults. We also do corporate team building. You can go again, www.thisisimprov.com for more information. If you would like to take a comedy and ghost and historical tour of Davy with me and Kim, you can see us in the persons. Uh, go to in w- the dark w- with w- flashlights. In the dark with a flashlight. Uh, you yeah, can go to www.thisistours.com and purchase your tickets today. We hold them once a month, those walking tours. If you would like to hear more histories, mysteries, and ghost stories of Florida, please make sure to go to This Is Legends of Yesterday podcast. Again, linked in the description down below. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere really that you listen to podcasts. I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful, and glorious rest of your day. You beautiful creatures. My name is Alexandra. This is Kim. Thank you, Kim. (laughs) Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.